Hey guys, today we're going to go through the Icon Pro X and Pro XS from Icon Pro Audio. We're going to go through how to set it up within Studio One, as well as how it integrates within Studio One. We're also going to map some of the basic F functions within Studio One. Let's get started. Connecting these is very simple. Um, each unit comes with a USB A to B cable. Um, the Pro X has a um, USB hub on the back of it with uh, um, USB-A ports to connect each one of these XSs to the Pro X. Um, I've read some forums and things like that, that the hub, some people have had troubles with the hub within the Pro X, um, losing connection to the XSs, and they've uh, simply fixed that by buying an external USB hub and uh, just bypassing the hub within the unit. Um, I haven't had any problems with my USB hub within mine, so I haven't actually replaced it or add an external one at all. So uh, it's worked great for me. Um, basically, once you have all the USBs connected and the powers connected to the back of these two units, you'll be able to flip on the power switches. There's two rocker switches behind um, the back of these here. You'll flip them on and the screens will light up. Um, on the front of the screen here on each unit, it'll actually um, display which DAW mode you want to pick um, to use. Um, mine, I have it set up as Studio One. There's Cubase, uh, Pro Tools, Nuendo, pretty much every major DAW is supported via these. Um, if not, they do actually make some uh, mapping software. So uh, one cool function that these actually have that, uh, that I've noticed not a lot of other controllers have is what they call auto mode. So it auto detects which DAW it, you're using and it'll, and it'll pick that up and then change the actual layout of the unit to map that DAW. Um, since I'm only using Studio One, I just have it as uh, Studio One. The next thing you'll need to do is add in if there's any XSs associated to these units and where their placement is in, rel in, in relation to the Pro X. So if you have another one to the left, um, you'll actually arrow it over and put it to, to the left. If you have two or three on the right, you'll just basically ID which ones those are down the line. And it actually walks you through those on the LED screens here. So one thing with uh, um, Studio One that would be really nice is they have this second LCD screen here above the faders and some DAWs will send out the names of the channels on a separate MIDI channel um, so you could pick it up on these. Studio One does not do that yet um, via the Mac EHUI protocol. Um, it would be nice to do that. Uh, hint, hint, Studio One uh, engineers, please. Um, That'd be awesome on this controller to be able to take the DAW channel names and put them on here. Right now, basically all it is is a, a glorified channel name saying channels one through eight and then nine through 16 and then master. Um, and that doesn't change at this point in time, but it would be nice in Tint Studio One engineers. Also, may I add that these units come with um, template maps um, for Pro Tools, Logic Pro, Reaper, Reason, Bitwig, Samplitude. Um, they come with those, like I'm using Studio One here, this, this template here. Standard, the unit actually comes with uh, Cubase Nuendo um, built into it. And you would just basically simply lay this um, overlay over the top and it would show the correct maps to those buttons. Same with the Pro Tools, it'll just lay over the top there. There's your map for Pro Tools. So that's pretty simple on how they auto, uh, how the auto detect works and how it puts these, you know, in play. And these are nice for that. And each unit comes with these templates, or if you lose them, they do make um, a template actually on their website that you can print them off and cut them out and, uh, you know, put them on there. So once we have the Pro X and the Pro S connected USB to our computer, our computer should automatically um, detect the drivers and install them. If it doesn't, uh, you can find the drivers actually on Icon Pro Audio's website. So we're gonna go ahead and fire up Studio One Pro 4 now. And while Studio One Pro 4 is, we're gonna kind of look at some of the hardware base uh, of this. So it kind of it's 
uh, competitor was the Mackey MCU HUI. I think uh, QCon Icon was going after trying to make a better MCU um, uh, HUI controller. And they really did a good job. Uh, one thing that you'll probably notice that the Mackie doesn't have that this does have is a very nice meter bridge. Um, the meter bridge I found out to be very, very responsive. Um, it's not like a liquid meter bridge. It's more of an LED um, meter bridge, but it does its job. The other thing, too, is I like the buttons much better on this. Uh, they're, they're much um, nicer, um, harder buttons um they're not like a, a rubber where the the text and everything else kind of rubs off over time uh another nice thing is the the faders on these are a lot uh smoother in my opinion uh the encoders on here are very nice too they're, they're a little bit more of a click they're not like a smooth encoder they kind of have like notch points it seems like but they really do the job for for the price point um the the uh, um, transport controls on this and the jog wheel on this are very nice. So ultimately, this is a very nice controller for the price point. And uh, um, great job to Icon for, for designing such a, a, a great um, um, controller. Really looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with to get more encoders um, based onto this. Because I saw on their website that they're actually looking at making an expansive uh, unit that just is encoders and LCD screens. So um, that's going to be awesome to really, you know, bring this controller uh, fully to life. So now that uh, Studio One Professional has been um, opened, we are going to code out, um, navigate down here to configure external devices. It's going to open up this dialog box. We're gonna see for me, I've got an MPD 218, um, the control, the control extender, and I've got an iPad app for the UC remote added here. So what I would do is I'm, I would go into add here and go down to Mackie and click each one of these and tell it to receive for the, for the control, it's gonna go to the Pro X and the receive from is gonna be the Pro X and the send to is gonna be the Pro X. For the extender, it's going to be the Pro XS and the XS as well. And every one of them, you're going to see it says XS1. It'll be XS2 if you've got another one, XS3. Um, and you're just going to send to and receive from the unit. So once you got that, you're going to um, go ahead and go into placement. And you're actually going to, it'll pull up these four groups here. I just stuck mine in group four. Um, I've noticed it doesn't really matter which group you put them in, just as long as you assign them to a group here. So it's actually going to show up like this, where they're going to be ungrouped. And what you're going to do is you'll pull it in and put them the way that they're, you know, laid out on your desk. So if the control is, the the X is on the left, you're going to set it up this way. If it's vice versa, like my setup, it's going to be set up this way. Once you got that, you're going to hit close and hit OK. So I'm gonna open up a track of mine here. And we're gonna see the, the Pro X and the XS here populate to what the track is. Um, the faders all moved very nice and smoothly to the track. Um, the, here's the jog wheel functions here, very nice and smooth, very elegant. Um, the zoom function, you can click the zoom here and zoom in or out. Um, you can zoom in you know, horizontally or zoom out horizontally. Um, and then deselect it. And basically what this does too here is just go from track to track to track to track on the left here, um, the up down arrows. If I click over, it's just, it's basically doing the same thing, just going down. So this is almost like a track selection navigation uh, on the left here. So one thing too that I, I really liked about using this with Pro, uh, Studio One Pro 4 is how efficient I become mixing by having all of the, the dials and everything and um, buttons and everything at my fingertips instead of you know having to mouse click and navigate into um, windows, I can pull them up. For example, I've mapped a, a couple of simple functions that I use every day um, to the F functions here. 
So one of them too is I just have a couple of toggles. So the F2 function that I mapped is my console just basically opens and closes my console here. Um, F3 um, opens and closes my channel strip. So um, that's a really nice uh, um, ability to have. F3 adds an insert and it'll pull up the dialogue and I can actually use these buttons here to add the insert that I want um, for that. And I could hit cancel or enter to add the insert. Um, same with uh, one of these is add a send. So whatever track I'm selected on here, um, I can add a insert or a send to it. And that's, that's a really nice, really, really nice if, if uh, um, you need to do something quickly. Uh, one really nice thing too I've, I've discovered with this is the, I call it, uh, some of the new digital consoles, they call it sends on fader where it, uh, instead of you know, using a send on, a, on an encoder, they actually have it where you can send it on a fader and use the fader instead of the encoder. And they actually have what they call, a, I, they, it, it's more of a fader flip um, function. But say I want to you know, look at the pan of these, I could, um, right now the pan's actually on the encoders up at the top here. But say I want to have a better finite adjustment, I can fader flip here. And then here is the pans of all the channels that are on there um, via the faders. And you'll see it actually tells you center, left 56, so on and so forth. And I can use this and, um, and adjust the pan here very nice and smoothly. And that's really nice for writing automation too if, if, if you're doing some automation things. And simply you can exit back out of that by just clicking the fader flip again and it brings you back. A uh, couple other things too is they've got um, different uh, views. So if I just want to view like the audio tracks, um, if I have some VSTs, I could, you know, look at, if I click instrument, that's basically the VSTs that are in this file. Um, the aux are basically, uh, you know, bus send, or not bus sends, but um, FX sends that I'm using. Um, I can look at just buses, if I have any buses. I can look at just masters here. So just on this file, I had two monitor sets um, for QSENs, and then I have my main. Uh, that's something really, really nice um, for this uh, particular um, controller, is being able just to navigate through all that stuff. If you wanted to, you can put in, you know, have these encoders control the, the plugins by just clicking plugins and mapping the encoders to the plugin that you want to use. Um, for me, I've actually used a, uh, a multi-touch um, screen for mine. And more of what I've used mine for is, we'll go back to pan here. There we go. So more what I've used mine for is you'll see I have like, two different layers of plugins here. I can actually just use my mouse or I can use my finger here and just, um, you know, flip between the two. I could move them if I needed to on this touch panel. Um, very nice and responsive touch panel. Um, I just use it like this to a, a dial everything in. Um, very responsive. This is a, a 10.1 um, touch panel that I just picked off, up off eBay for a hundred bucks. It's actually a panel for uh, an HVAC control system to mount into a wall to control that. And I just repurpose it, add uh, HDMI and VGA and USB on the back of it. Um, just plugged it in and it automatically found the drivers for the, the, touch, the touch device and just set that up that way. Um, and then just set the resolution on my uh, video card for my PC for that. But back to the controller here. Uh, all the all the fun the main functions that you'll access to here you got to record on the top your solos your mutes your selects for uh, viewing the channels um, they've got some uh, fader locks they've got where you can move over in banks of eight um, faders or just one fader at a time um, so that's really nice uh, they've got like a forward and back where you can kind of scrub a little bit or if you just want to use the jog wheel. The jog wheel more I notice snaps to whatever resolution that you're in um, on your on your uh, um, uh, time signature bars. 
So it kind of snaps to that. If I was to zoom in here, we'll see it kind of, it jumps a, about the same. Um, so it's, it, it's not as like a scrub function. They do have a, a scrub button on this, but uh, Studio One does not actually uh, support scrubbing that I know of. So that's kind of it's kind of a bummer there that you couldn't hold scrub and and just scrub between this to find something if you're looking for something very finite. So now that we've uh, kind of gone over how this thing integrates with Studio One, let let's let's maybe map some of uh, um, the F functions on here. So if you guys need to create your own um, maybe a, a, a quick you know shortcut that you guys use um, that we can do that. So um, we're going to navigate up here to the top left, up to this guy right up here. That there's like a, a panel here where it shows like the the functions that of what you're controlling. I'm going to hit this arrow here. I'm going to go down to the control. You're going to see it pulls up this uh, external devices tab, and essentially what we're going to do is we're going to you'll see where it says F1, F2, F3, so on and so forth here. You'll see where mine is my F1's add tracks, console, so channel editor, add insert, add send, and blah, blah, blah. If I want to change those or, or map those, I can right click and go assign command here and scroll through. You know, I could type in the search bar, add it, you know, what I'm looking for. Um, or I can, you know, scroll through here and see what they have. Um, maybe there's something that I didn't even know they had. And they kind of put it in folders, really nice folders here for you. And once you got you click OK, it's going to map that function to there. So um, very simple um, to use. Uh, you know, for the plugins, it, it's a little bit different. We'll kind of we'll go over that uh, in a little bit here. Um, uh, probably in another video, we'll go over that with with the how to map plugins to the encoders here for you guys. So. Pretty much really covers how this controller integrates with Studio One, um, how how smooth my my um, work environment has become just because of having a hard um, button control panel, um, you know, control surface, excuse me, in my studio, uh, and also just you know using more tools to my advantage, uh, you know, because there's not enough, maybe not enough encoders that I have here because they haven't done that uh, extension unit with all the encoders yet. I've actually, you know, moved to using a touch screen for just controlling plugins and being able to see that um, very smoothly and, and you know, make my, uh, work, my work environment um, more efficient for me. So that, that's pretty much everything on the QCOM Pro X and Pro XS with Studio One Pro 4, guys. Uh, looking forward to uh, hearing your comments in the uh, comment section. If you've got any questions or things like that that you would like answered, uh, feel free to um, send me a message or, or PM me. Um, uh, uh, during this whole virus thing, I hope every one of you guys is staying safe and healthy and, and uh, having fun with music. And um, keep let's keep the music going, guys. Thank you. Yeah.